Hi, I'm Miss Joy. I teach LPI art in first grade at Happy Valley and Spring Hill Elementary, and I also teach LPI art for TK classes at Burton Valley and Happy Valley. And the lesson I'd like to share with you today is a TK lesson. However, I think it's something that could be fun for older brothers and sisters, um, even for grown-ups if you want to work along with your child. It's something that you can adapt for any age. So here are the supplies that we'll need. Usually we do this lesson on a white piece of paper that's around eight by 12. Um, however, a piece of printer paper will work just fine, this eight and a half by 11. If you are a big kid wanting a challenge and you've got poster board lying around the house, you could do it on a gigantic piece of poster board. It's really, anything is okay right now. Um, for the other supplies, we are using primary colors today. So that is red, blue, and yellow. Now, I'm showing you markers, but it could be red, blue, and yellow crayons. It could be colored pencils. It could be a combination of any of those things. Maybe you just had, um, a project on the sun and your yellow marker is all the way out because you used it so much for your coloring, you can be creative and use a scrap of paper or a post-it note to fill in the yellow on your picture. So this is a time for you to use those creative artistic energies and make your project. The other thing that you'll need is a ruler or a straight edge. If you don't have a ruler in your house, rulers, we call them a ruler because it can measure. If you don't have a ruler, you can use anything with a straight edge. So I've got this file folder that I can use this edge to make my straight line. Don't use a book, like a, a it's okay probably to use a magazine, but I would not use a book because if you're putting a crayon or a marker to draw your line, Sometimes we get marker or crayon on the side of our straight edge, so we don't want to use a book. Okay, so first let me tell you about the artist that we are studying today. Our artist today is Piet Mondrian. He was born in the Netherlands, and he is most famous for working with straight lines and primary colors. Piet Mondrian started the way a lot of artists do. He painted landscapes, but as he saw more art and met more artists, he was inspired to keep updating his style. Look at these two paintings. This is Still Life with Ginger Pot 1 and Still Life with Ginger Pot 2. Do you see how it became more abstract? Mondrian moved to Paris and followed artists there. Look at his trees. Mondrian's style was changing. He began working in straight lines and primary colors. The primary colors are red, blue, and yellow. They're the colors we use to make all the other colors. Now, do you hear the music in the background? When Mondrian was older, he moved from Paris to New York City, and he was so inspired by the hustle and bustle of New York and this boogie-woogie music that was popular at the time. This is the style he was most famous for. Straight, horizontal, and vertical lines and primary color blocks. This painting is called New York City One. And this one is called Broadway Boogie Woogie. It's one of Pete Mondrian's most famous works of art. And a lot of people think it is based on the grid of New York City, that all of those lines look like streets and the lights look like traffic lights everywhere. This one is Victory Boogie Woogie. Now, if you're wondering where you can find a Pete Mondrian actual work of art, you can see Broadway Boogie Woogie at the Museum of Modern Art in New York City, but you don't have to go that far because right here in the Bay Area, there's a Mondrian at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art. It's called Unfinished New York City 2. Okay, so here's how we're going to do our project. 
if you are a big kid and want to do a detailed picture, we are using our rulers to make straight lines horizontally, straight lines vertically, and then afterwards we'll use our markers or crayons or colored pencils to add in some of those primary colors like Pete Mondrian used. But for my TK friends, maybe you could follow along with me. So take your ruler or your straight edge and put it right in the middle of your paper. Just do your best. It doesn't have to be perfect. One hand has to hold that ruler in place. With the other hand, I am going to take my crayon and I'm going to draw a big line across the middle of my page. Now, not exactly straight, that's okay, that's okay. We're gonna keep going. This top section, put your ruler right there, kind of in the middle again of the top section. One hand holds it firmly in place, or you could get your grown up to help with that. Put your crayon or marker on top and follow across that line. Making sure mine shows all the way up there. There we go. So now we've got two black lines. Now let's move to that bottom section. Put it somewhere right in the middle, right in the middle of that bottom section. One hand holds it in place. The other hand follows across the top and makes a thick black line. Now, we're not done. We are going to turn our paper and do the same thing to make lines in the opposite direction. So again, right about the middle of my paper, right about the middle of my paper, mine are coming out a little bit crooked, but that's okay. We're doing the best we can. Right there in the middle, one hand holds that ruler down, the other hand uses the crayon to go across the top and makes a straight line. Now let's come up. We'll do one across this section. I know I'm moving a little bit faster than we would in the classroom. Feel free to stop this and take as much time as you need to complete these steps. Now we're gonna move our ruler to the bottom section. Again, right around the middle. One hand holds that ruler in place. The other hand draws that straight line. Now my squares are pretty much, squares and rectangles are pretty much the same size. I've got one that's long and skinny. I've got a few that are smaller, but Pete Mondrian had some that were big, some that were little, right? So let's take our ruler, find your biggest section. Find your biggest section. I think for me, it's this section right here. And I'm gonna add another line, kind of close to one of the lines that is already there. And I'm gonna use my black crayon to draw a line that gives me a section with smaller squares. I like that. Let's do the same thing in this direction. I'm going to find my biggest section. I think maybe my biggest section is right here where one of my lines went crooked. So I'm gonna put my ruler there Steady it and draw my black line. How about that? Okay, now I'm ready to start with color. But before we do, if you are an older artist working, um, perhaps you did all of these steps in pencil with your ruler. One thing that you might want to do now, if you started in pencil, is to use a black marker or a black crayon or even a black Sharpie and trace over your pencil lines. My TK friends, we just started with crayon. Otherwise, it's a lot of writing and tracing for us. So now we're gonna move on to color. Pete Mondrian liked those primary colors and those colors are red, blue, and yellow. So I'm gonna start with red and I think I'll use marker. But if you wanted to use a little bit of marker, a little bit of crayon, it's up to you. With my red marker, 
I'm going to pick out one big square to color in and one of the smaller squares to color in. So let's do that now. Your picture can go in either direction. You can have it be tall, like a portrait. You can have it be long and wide, like a landscape. If you are using supplies that you found at home, maybe your markers aren't as bright as they used to be, that's okay. We're working with what we've got today. There's my big red rectangle. Now I'm going to move on to one of the smaller red rectangles. I think I'm going to do this long skinny one here. And again, I'm coloring it all the way in. I'm doing careful coloring where I try to go right next to the black line and then I fill in. It's not a race. We've got plenty of time on our hands, don't we? Okay, now that takes care of red. The next color I'm going to choose is yellow. And we're going to do the same thing for yellow. One big and one little. So get your yellow marker or crayon or colored pencil and you can work along with me right now and we'll fill in one big square or rectangle and one little square or rectangle. Here's my big yellow. Okay, time to choose my small yellow. I think I'm going to make this one my little yellow guy. All right, I've got one big and one little red, one big and one little yellow. Time to move on to blue. One big blue. I'm going to choose this one, I think. And again, I'm trying to go close to that black line, but stay in the space because that's how I like to do it. If you're using colored pencils or crayons, it might take you a little bit longer to fill in these spaces. That's okay. I know everybody does their own coloring a different way. Some kids like to do little circles some little lines back and forth. It's really okay. This is your artwork and it should be the way you like it. Almost got my blue filled in. As you get close to the edge, maybe you'll need to put a piece of paper or something under there so you don't accidentally write on the table. All right. Now I'm ready for my small blue, my small blue. And my small blue, I think I'm going to have it be this one. Still kind of big, but that's okay. Smaller than the other one that I made. And I'm gonna fill it all the way in with my black, with my blue, rather, marker. There we go. Now we have all of the primary colors in our picture, just like Pete Mondrian used to. We've got red, we've got yellow, we've got blue. There's one more thing we're going to add. Mondrian also liked to include black or even gray in many of his pictures. So we have our black lines, but I think I'm also going to include a black square. And I'll use my black crayon for that again. You can use your black marker if you want to. And for this one, I think I might even do two. I'm going to put one over here. You can pick out a black square or rectangle to fill in.
and I think I'll add one more. I think I want this little guy to be black too. This little one. There we go. So here's my finished work of art. I have all of the primary colors. I tried my straight lines and I got to make art in the style of Pete Mondrian. We make art because it makes us feel good. It makes us try new things. It helps us learn about other people and it's a way to express ourselves. In TK, we like to finish our lessons with a story. This story is called Mouse Paint by Ellen Stoll Walsh. And it's a great book for this lesson because I see right away primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And remember, our primary colors are the colors that we use to make all of the other colors. Okay, Mouse Paint. Once there were three white mice on a white piece of paper. The cat couldn't find them. One day, while the cat was asleep, the mice saw three jars of paint. One red, one yellow, and one blue. They thought it was mouse paint. They climbed right in. Then, one was red, one was yellow, and one was blue. They dripped puddles of paint onto the paper. The puddles looked like fun. The red mouse stepped into a yellow puddle and did a little dance. His red feet stirred the yellow puddle until, look, he cried, red feet in a yellow puddle make orange. The yellow mouse hopped into a blue puddle. His feet mixed and stirred and stirred and mixed until, look down, said the red mouse and the blue mouse, yellow feet in a blue puddle make green. Then the blue mouse jumped into a red puddle. He splashed and mixed and danced until, purple, they all shouted. Blue feet in a red puddle make purple. But the paint on their fur got sticky and stiff. So they washed themselves down to a nice soft white and painted the paper instead. They painted one part red and one part yellow. They mixed red and yellow to paint an orange part yellow and blue to paint a green part, blue and red to paint a purple part, but they left some white because of the cat. Thanks for joining me today. I wanna to give a special hello to my TK friends in Mrs. Bunting's class at Burton Valley and Mrs. Waddell's class at Happy Valley. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.